Hey everybody, it's Ian. Um, I hope that your week is going well and that you're preparing for your finals, getting your case studies all done. Um, I wanted to <clears throat> kind of report in from here in Austin and let you know kind of what's what's been going on, what the setup of these me these uh, AAPA meetings are, um, and what you can expect if you are to come in future years. So I'll start out. We um, you know, at first we registered, got these fun little booklets that tell us all about uh, what events are going on, uh, what time those events are happening, where they're going to be. Um, there's layouts and maps of the hotels in them. Um, and got a pretty cool bag. Maybe some of you will recognize this guy here. It's Homo Heidelbergensis. Um, but it's it's a really phenomenal event, and there's uh, there are auction booths, there are booths with uh, one dollar books, um, casts. I saw a full body cast of Homo Neanderthalensis for something like thirteen hundred nine hundred dollars or thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, so that's really impressive. Um, the conference uh, really kind of got going on Wednesday. Um, I flew in on Tuesday. Um, so there um, wasn't really anything going on then, but uh, Wednesday evening was the orientation um, and uh, registration session. Um, that's really where uh, we just kind of got together and uh, had a little bit of a mixer. There wasn't really a whole lot of anything specific going on there, more just a meet and greet session so that you can network, um, go with your professor, Mulhern in my case, uh, and Grace and Fran's case, um, and meet other professors from other universities, have them introduce you, um, talk about your research, talk about their research, talk about the research that you've read in the last year. Um, a couple of notable names that I have had the great opportunity to meet through Professor Mulhern here have been uh, individuals like Steve Owsley, um, who has written some of the articles that we've read for this class, um, and Dave Hunt, who actually donated much of the human remains that are in the Fort Lewis collection right now. Um, so those gentlemen, phenomenal people, really great personalities. Um, we got to uh, just kind of chat, have, uh, have a little bit of colloquial time, um, went out and got a beer with Steve Owsley and Professor Mulhern and Fran and Grace and uh, Steve's wife and this other professor, um, uh, Marilyn, um, who is a phenomenal person, really, really great personality. Um, some of the, so as far as the way the event is set up. There are two different kind of uh, events you can kind of go to. Uh, the podium talks and the poster presentations. The poster presentations are very similar to what we have at Fort Lewis uh, during the senior seminar posters, wherein um, people put their posters onto a board, they stand next to them, wait for people to walk up, read their poster, ask them questions, um, and elaborate. Um, some of the notable posters that I've uh, gone to, uh, let me pull this up really quickly. It was yesterday in the afternoon. Yesterday, unfortunately, I had some, uh, some work to do through the morning, so I didn't get to go out. But um, the, uh, some of the... Oh, a couple of the podium presentations that I went to were uh, titled Male Immature Interactions in Bonobos, Pan Paniscus, and the Relationship to Testosterone, Male Reproductive Behavior, and Affiliation with Mothers. Um, and so they were talking about uh, interactions with juvenile individuals and with uh, recent mothers who might be going back into gestation at some point soon. Um, and I also got to attend the urea concentration as a measure of protein balance in pre- and post-release Bornean orangutans. And that's really interesting because it talks about the rehabilitation process um, and how you can kind of use the urea in urine um, as a metric for the amount of protein being intaken by the organism and use that as kind of a metric for what their overall health might be. 
Um, I unfortunately one of the one of the talks that I was most excited to go see um, the paleoecological context of Homo erectus in eastern Turkana, northern Kenya, between 2.0 and 1.4 million years ago, that got canceled. So. It, it appears that this year there seem to be more last-minute cancellations than previous years from the conversations that are happening. Uh, but it's it's really phenomenal even to just be able to read these titles so that I can look for them in journals to come. Um, today, however... Oh, um, some of the posters. Uh, so sorry. Um, some of the posters that we've been... Uh, that I've gotten a, the chance to take a look at are... Um, there was one in particular that I thought was really awesome, and it had to do with uh, determining sexual dimorphism from the carpal bones. Let's see. Do, do, do. Sex estimation from carpals in an American white sample. So that's really similar to the research that I'm currently doing for my senior seminar, uh, wherein I am measuring the proximal phalanges of the hand um, to determine sex uh, using a uh, logistic regression method. Um, and this researcher, uh, uh, K.R. Taylor and M.D. Hamilton, um, they did the same thing, but with carpal bones. So they were using things like the hamate, the capitate, um, the triquetral, and the lunate, I think, were the four big ones, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, really, really brilliant research, and it was really uh, exciting to talk to somebody who was doing something so similar to what I've been working on myself for the past year. Um, it, it gives you an opportunity to take a look at what other people are doing in the field and get enthusiastic, really. You, you, in, you ask questions, you um, tell them about what you're doing as well, you introduce yourself, you network, um, and that's really what um, this event is about, is getting out and around other uh, anthropologists in the field of physical anthropology. Um, and then today, I, I got to have a little bit more of an active experience. I've been bouncing around uh, poster presentations all morning. It is now uh, 1 o'clock or something like that. Let me check on my computer. 1.38. <clears throat> and so uh, this morning at 9.15, I went to Forensic Science, Death, and the Public Towards Effective Compassion and compass Compassionate Communication, wherein they were talking about um, the first... Native American boarding school, the Carlisle Institute, I want to say it's called, um, which used to be a military uh, barracks. Um, and the, the individuals that were buried there in the process of repatriating their remains. Um, and she was talking a lot about how, um, you know, when we try to build trust with indigenous communities between our field and the indigenous community with whom we're working, um, it, it also has to be a consideration of, number one, you know, do we deserve that trust? Because probably and almost invariably the answer is not really. Um, as far as, you know, our field has gone, we, we have kind of a bad history um, for uh, kind of taking the lead on things and not really asking um, the opinions of other cultures. So that was one of the considerations. And then she was also, you know, how do you build trust? How do you maintain trust? How, um, how do you do this with communication and um, bilateral um, actions? Um, so it, that was a really fascinating talk. And then it, directly after that, I sat in on moving forward with NAGPRA from basic implementation to ethical engagement and collaborative reciprocity. Now, this wasn't necessarily so much of a presentation as a speech, um, but it was a really good speech to sit in on to kind of take reckoning with um, the history of um, professionals in our field and um, <clears throat> and interacting with the NAGPRA logs, law structure and abiding by it. Um, 
there were some other ones that I missed out on, things like the um, the evolution of body size in diverse lesser apes. That one got canceled as well, but it would have been a fascinating talk. I did go to one called Are Humans Over-Specialized Evolutionary Dead Ends? Um, short answer, probably. Uh, but it's uh, the, the way that this individual went about his research, C. Rolian, um, went about his research, was really fascinating. He created these three-dimensional models wherein he was projecting um, evolutionary trends in a directional manner. Um, if I end up running into him, I'm, I'm really fascinated to ask him how he kind of justifies using a directional model to explain a non-directional phenomenon like evolution. As we can see with the stickleback fish, evolution doesn't have a direction. You don't evolve from being a, a hominid to to being a circopithecoid. It doesn't like, you don't like go in a certain direction, you just end up where you are. Um, so it would be really fascinating to ask him about that. Um, and then uh, Grace actually today is presenting her poster, so I'm gonna be going to that. Um, so that's very exciting. Other than that, everything has been uh, a little bit crazy. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of running around. The silent auction is phenomenal. Some of the items that are there are choice. Um, I ended up getting a t-shirt at one of the booths that says, trust me, I'm an anthropologist, which is great. Um, and then at the silent auction, I got this awesome t-shirt that says primate, and it was made by the uh made by the leaky foundation um but the only issue was I, I saw that it was a size 10 and i was figuring oh that's like an adult size or something or other no i'm gonna have to give this one to fen or kai <laughs> but uh aside from that you know it's a it's a really exciting event um, Professor Mulhern is a phenomenal introductor. She has been so accommodating for, uh, for the students of hers that have come along with her this year. Um, so it's just been a really great experience getting to meet all these prominent individuals in the field of physical anthropology, in the fields of um, primatology, in uh, paleo uh, pathology, in um, bioarchaeology. Just being able to see all these talks um, and this di these diverse perspectives is a really valuable experience. Um, if you are curious, we are currently staying in a Hyatt Regency hotel, um, so all of the talks are taking place in the various ballrooms, um, but they did um, provide the ability to make reservations through the AAPA to get a conference rate, um, which was reduced from what the actual rates would be otherwise. Um, so, got a very nice room set up here. Um, really enjoying my stay, um, and it's, uh, if you graduate, also, I wanted to let you all know, if you graduate in the winter, you, uh, and you submit your, uh, project to the AAPA before the end of the semester, uh, then you will be able to get a travel grant to come out to this. You won't have to actually pay to come to the AAPA meeting. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, try and work the system whatever way you can to get the funding you can to be as involved in the field as possible um, because that's really the way that you're going to get your name out there and get known and get the job opportunities wherein people just think of you when they see something. Um, and to that effect, there was a, uh, student, uh, a student symposium talk deal um, on Wednesday night uh, wherein there was a panel of professors talking about and answering frequently asked questions, but talking about um, looking for postgrad work, looking for postdoc, looking for graduate work, um, looking for uh, trying to get your name out there, deciding on what field to go into, um, how to pursue your interests. Um, so it was it, it was a really valuable. Um, talk to be in because there was a lot of tidbits things like you know introduce yourself if you don't feel comfortable introducing yourself 
Find an extroverted friend, have them introduce you. Ask your professor to introduce you. And it's all about the social networking that goes on within our field that really ends up with the, uh, the job availability that you will end up experiencing. So the more you can network, the better, the better you can uh, kind of put yourself off to people and say, this is who I am, this is what I'm interested in. Um, and the more clear you can be about that, the better off you will be in your field. Um, well, that's all I've got to talk about for today. I will come back and uh, upload another video tomorrow um, wherein we will talk about um, the discussions that go on then um, and any events that go on tonight. I believe the Leaky Foundation is having a party tonight um, and it is scheduled to go until 2 a.m. So I'm assuming it's going to be quite a hop in an affair. So I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I know I've been a little bit scattered and there are some empty spaces, um, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, get a little bit better at that tomorrow. Um, if there are any questions, feel free to post in the discussions, ask me questions, um, hit me up on Facebook, text me, um, whatever you prefer. Um, I would be happy to give you more information on things that you heard about and would like to talk about. So. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday.